Hi folks and welcome back to Fishing with Dan. Last week I fished on the Tidal River for carp and I was trotting down using an Avon float. Just one of these things. Um, just trotting down the edge uh, but there was quite a current going. It was four, four and a half feet of water but I decided rather than to try and feed loose feed by hand or ground bait by hand I decided to use one of these things. It's a bait dropper. And I actually had a really, really good day, and I think it was definitely because of this. Now, before I actually go on a bit more about this, if you haven't watched last week's video, I'll put a link up above now, and if you want to stop this one, watch that one, and then come back, please feel free to do so. For those of you that have already watched last week's video, you would have seen me using this, but basically, it's very, very simple. Um, it's just a container with a flap on the front, and you put bait in there, close the lid, put the, the catch on, and then attach this to your rod. Now I'll show you that in a bit more detail later, but let's talk about um, availability and cost. They really are dirt cheap. I can't remember what this one costs. I think it's sort of about seven pounds, something like that from the tackle shop, and I bought it years ago, so you know, I don't think they're all that expensive. Works exactly the same way with the lip flap at the front, but this one's made of metal. Now, Mine here are made of plastic because, of course, I 3D printed them. And for those of you with 3D printers, um, the file is up on Thingiverse, and I'll put a link to all of these files down in the description box down below. For those of you that uh, need to buy one, if you decide to buy one, I think there's probably three, maybe four different manufacturers. I know Dinsmore's do one. I think Semo, S-E-Y-M-O, do one. And there's a couple of other ones, but type in the search for bait dropper and you'll come up with something like these things here. And the beauty of them is that, as I just explained, if you are feeding your swim and you throw bait in, it goes in, let's say here, but by the time the current's taken it and it's four feet deep, it could be two or three meters away down here. So you're never actually quite sure. And of course, bait sinks at different rates. Uh, pellets uh, sink at different rates to sweet corn. Sweet corn sinks at a different rate to maggots. So you could have, if you throw them all in the same area, your um, pellets will be down here, your sweet corn will be here, and your maggots will be over here. And you're never actually quite sure. But the beauty of this thing is that it always goes in the same place. So let me just show you this quick uh, excerpt from last week's video where I show you how all this works. Okay, time for a bait dropper full again, as I said pellets and corn, don't overfill it and that's maybe just a fraction over full, just be on the safe side. You really don't want your lid not to open and it really is a question of just putting it about there. There we go, we're on the bottom look because the floats come up. That's emptied and we're ready for another one. Okay, so you've seen the general principle of the thing then. Um, I was using this medium sized one because the, the really big one was just too heavy. And as I say, it's just a question of getting your bait, putting it in there, make sure you don't overfill it, close the lid, pull the catch down and attach it to your rod. So let's actually just show you that in practice. What I'm gonna do, this is the actual rig I used last week. Avon float. I had a, a bulk, oops, a bulk of number fours down here, a couple of number six droppers, and I actually ended up with a, a size eight hook, which is unheard of for me, I know. Um, but it worked very well, and it meant I could get lots of bait on it. So if we take one of my droppers, all you're gonna do is take your hook, put it through that little loop there, and then on the back, you'll see this piece of cork. Put that into it. Doesn't matter if it's a barbed or barbless hook. Mine's barbless, because that's all I have. And then, as you can see, it holds like that. So to fill it, if I bring these over, lift the catch up, open the lid, and then put some pellets in there. As I said, don't overfill it. If you do, what will happen is, you'll get pressure against this front plate, the front uh, panel here, and then it won't open. So it has to be a nice 
loose pack, but you can still get lots and lots of bait in there. Now, all being well, I can get this to face the front. If I drop this into the water and allow it to go down, as you can see, everything comes out. You just give it a couple of shakes when it's on the bottom. Obviously, there's a current, so this is pushing it out as well. Lift it up, the door's open, and you're ready for the next go. And as you can see, that's all in a nice, very neat little lump down there. Um, and again, you can use very large feeders, or I've also got, sorry, droppers. You've also got this little one here, and I believe SEMO uh, do a different um, sizes as well. Not absolutely sure, look it up for yourselves. But really, that's it. All you're gonna do, as I just showed you in that little clip, is to just cast this in, and then when you're done, take the hook out of the back, and put it on one side and you're back to fishing again. Don't worry about the hook coming out the back of this cork here. Um, these things have been around since, well, since I was a kid and that's the 1960s and they were probably around before that. And admittedly, they do look a bit like a Heath Robinson contraption, but over the years, people have used them and used them and the design stayed the same. Why change something if it isn't broken? You don't need to fix it if, it, if it's not broken, do you? So that's the, the general purpose idea of these things. As I've said, it's getting your bait down in exactly the same place on the bottom. You know, it's all going in the same place. And so when you trot over, that's where you expect your bites. And as I say, that's the beauty of these things. It does exactly what I've just explained. It gets the bait to where you need it to be. Okay, so any time from about there onwards, we should be looking at the possibility of a bite. Like that. <laughs> now, for those of you that are into 3D printing, um, I'll just explain basically what we have here. It's just literally two parts, the main body, the lid, and that's it. Don't need any supports, just print it as per the STL. Um, you've got the, the loop on the back, the cork, I just bought that from a local DIY store, chopped it so it's probably four millimetres thick, there's no hard and fast size, and then I just used some florist wire in the back there just to hold it in, just poke it through, twist it over, and that holds it on. The catch mechanism is, I think that's 2.5 millimetre uh, brass rod, and you can see I've just put a piece of... Um, silicon on here to stop it from riding up, another silicon below, and then I've got what we used to call a drilled bullet or a sinker on here. Now the beauty of this is that I can use this either as it stands, I can change it to a smaller one, or I can add a bigger one, whatever, to cope with the current. And that's all there is to the bait dropper. And really, that's all you need to know. If you've watched last week's video now, you'll have seen I had a real red letter day um, you didn't get to see half the fish I caught, but literally it was one fish after another and it was really all down to the bait dropper. So by all means, give it a go. And don't forget, you don't have to use it on a rod. You can use it on a pole as well. And you can even use it on a still water because still waters move. When the wind blows, you get an undertow. And sometimes if it's like, I, I, I fish a place up the road there, which is probably eight, 10 feet deep. And it's a massive undertow on the thing. So by putting it down on the bottom where I need it, I know where my bait is. So I think that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you get some uh, enjoyment out of fishing with one of these if you decide to buy one. And until the next time then, bye for now.